Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first episode of a new series that I'm going to be doing called Witchcraft Wednesdays. Um, I'll be uploading these videos every Wednesday that's just related to sort of witchcraft topics, um, astrology, tarot, um, all the sort of things that I learn along the way. Uh, this video is actually going to be about tarot and it's just a think potentially going to be like one of five parts maybe um but i'm sort of basically learning how to do tarot readings learning the meaning of every card and all this sort of stuff and i thought it would just be kind of cool to do like a learn the cards sort of like tarot cards with me kind of video i don't know um i just thought this might benefit other people that are out there that are interested in learning tarot as well um I'm not an expert, I'm literally learning, so I just thought I'd sort of go along that journey and then, you know, anyone that is a bit more, like, knowledgeable with tarot could just, you know, leave a comment down below, maybe better inter interpret interpretations of different cards and stuff like that. So, um, let's just get straight into the video, shall we? So the deck that I'm using is this one. It is the Shaman Caselli Tarot deck. Um, it comes with all of the cards inside as well as this little book that gives you like a small sort of description of each card. Um, yes, yeah, so it just gives you like a theme and like the symbolism of like the pictures and stuff like that, which is kind of really helpful as well, uh, especially when you're just starting out and you don't... I've got the hiccups, I'm so sorry. Uh, especially when you're starting out and you don't really know what everything means. So I thought I would just start with the Major Arcana um, and just get straight into it really. This is just my interpretation of it, uh, other people will have different interpretations, this may or may not help you, you may not resonate with the way I've interpreted, 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 in, interpreted the cards, I don't know if that's even a word now. Anyway, uh, this is just the way that I've I've done it um, and the way that it sort of just kind of sits with me and um, I've made notes of everything as well and um, yeah, it's all still quite fresh in my mind and there are quite a few cards so I have got the notes just to reference back just in case but I am going to try because yep, I am learning as well so I am going to try and just sort of go into them so it might not be like a big sort of description and interpretation because I am still just learning um, so it's the best way that I find that I can associate with them is just knowing like maybe just one or two words that I can associate with that sort of card and the symbolism of them and then um, you can always interpret that into whichever question you've got from from the reading and whatnot so um, let's get straight into it shall we the first card is the fool Now the Fool is like the first of the major and it represents new beginnings, naivety. Uh, he, in this particular image, he is right close to the cliff edge, which is just the innocence. He's got his head up. He's not really being aware of his surroundings and things like that. So it is a representation of new beginnings and naivety, like a free spirit. Now, if you were to get this card in reverse, it would just more, be more so representation of like recklessness and like inconsiderate and and things like that. Just like the recklessness being that he's so close to the edge and things like that. That's how I kind of have remembered it. Um, so that is card number one, the fool. Card number two goes into the magician. Got this, yeah, the magician. So this one for me, how the way I remember it is that the magician is about willpower and manifestation, like a magician would manifest magic. I don't know how if you wanna remember it, but that's just the way that I remember it and how I've like represented it. So like a magician, he represents um, manifestation and willpower. Uh, when you get this in reverse, however, it does represent trickery and um, illusions, which again, it's not hard to remember seeing as it's a magician. So there's that one. <laughs> um, the third card is the high priestess. Now this one re represents your intuition, that inner voice. Um, that's the best way that I can remember it, as just being like your intuition, your gut feeling, that inner voice. Um, 
and your unconsciousness is what I've written here. Uh, when you get it in reverse, it's basically like the opposite of that. So, I mean, with all the cards, when you get the card in reverse, it technically just means the opposite. So for this particular card in reverse, it would mean um, losing that inner voice and um, yeah, kind of losing your way a little bit and not listening to that inner intuition, having like repressed feelings, that sort of stuff. That's what that would represent. What is this? Number card number four. <laughs> card number four is the Empress. Now this one I I personally can remember quite well just because of the image in itself. So this one represents nature, motherhood and uh, fertility. So in the card you can see that she's surrounded by nature. She's surrounded by fruits and like yeah, basically like pomegranates, and the pomegranate is is like a proper representation and a key of uh, fertility. I think that's in a lot of like, um, what's it? What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word, but I know that pomegranate is a representation of fertility. And um, when you get this card in particular, in reverse, it means the opposite of that. So when you think of like motherhood and fertility, you just think of someone that's very caring and very like loving and independent and all those sort of things. Um, in reverse, it means that you're very dependent, you're very clingy. Um, what else have I put on here? It's emptiness and nosiness. So it's being smothering, being a bit too much, too motherly is the best way to try and remember it. The fifth card is the fifth card is the Emperor. Now this one represents strength, more like authority and like power and um, what else have I written for this one? The Emperor, authority, ambition, structure and control um, and then and power. And when you have this one in reverse, just think of that to an extreme into a negative sort of way. So just it's being like almost like tyrant like um, cold and very like too like almost too powerful that it's it's unfair, it's unbalanced. Um, overbearing is the word I wrote here. Um, which I think, yeah, represents it quite well. So my memory card was full, so I had to delete a couple of things. So the angling and stuff might be, might change, but, um, we were onto the sixth card. So the sixth card is this one and that is the Hierophant. Hierophant? I think that's what it's, that's how you read it. That's how I'm reading it. Uh, this one represents, um, tradition and ethics and all those sort of like consistent sort of things. Um, when you get this card in reverse, it represents rebellion, new beginnings. Yeah. What else do I put for that one? New approaches. Um, cool. So going into the seventh card, the seventh card. The seventh card is the lovers. Like this. Now this one just to me just represents union. Um, that's just the way that I remember it as the lovers. It's two people. It's a partnership. It's a union. Um, when you get this one in reverse, however, it represents one-sidedness, um, inconsistency, balance in like a partnership and things like that. Um, and that's the lovers. Eight, card eight. Card eight is the chariot. This card represents direction. Uh, you can sort of see that by the fact that it's in a chariot and they're going in a direction. Um, it is, however, also like a representation of like a bit of a struggle. So um, it is like a good thing though. It's it's one of those where it's like willpower and like um, self-discipline and, and that sort of directionness. Um, if you get this, however, in reverse it does represent um loss of direction and um aggression and out of control i think it is lack of control so um that's the representation of the chariot number nine we go into justice like so now justice like the way that I remember this one as well is the purple curtain in the back. Purple is a colour that represents wisdom. 
um, and then she's also holding a scales which are balanced so it's very much about fairness and um, wisdom logic all that sort of stuff um, when you get this card however in reverse it represents unfairness um, unjust and um, dishonesty unfairness yeah that is justice um, the next card I'm, I've kind of I think it's number nine but I've yeah we're just gonna get rid of the numbers now because I don't remember them so we're going just the next card the next card is the temperance like this now this one I remember by it just being about balance and like the middle ground um, and that sort of fairness in that sort of way uh, I don't know how I remember this by that to be fair like I just remember that it is that so there's no like visual key for me that makes me remember that um this in obviously reverse would be the opposite of that so it just means um not being in balance one-sidedness uh, maybe you're feeling a bit lost confused um extremes excess and lack of balance the next card going in is strength presented like so and that pretty much tells you what it represents it represents strength so strength bravery um, all that sort of jazz uh, when you get this however in reverse it represents um, lack of self-belief um, self-consciousness that sort of thing um, self-doubt weakness and insecurities that's what I wrote down the next card is the hermit and this one is a representation of a journey of like trying to find the truth and the way that I remember that is with the fact that he's holding a lantern and he's in the dark so he's looking, he's seeking, he's guiding the way um, so it's kind of that sort of representation. Um, also in the little book that comes with the tarot deck it sort of says how um, in comparison to the fool where his head is up and he's kind of naive and all that sort of stuff his head is down he is looking at the ground he's looking at the where he's going so he's kind of like more um, wise about his journey and again truth discovery and stuff like that um, I've also written sorry I'm using my um, computer screen my Mac screen as a light so it keeps going off so I have to keep tapping it. Uh, I've also written that it represents patience, uh, contemplation and inner guidance. Um, so when you get this card in reverse that will represent uh, losing your way, loneliness and isolation is what I've written down. So yeah just f think of it as like someone that's like seeking the way. Um, he's, oh God, he's got a lantern, he's obviously like He's looking down he's looking where he's going he's seeking the truth and when it's in reverse you've kind of lost your way think of it as just yeah like he doesn't know where he's going he's not seeking that truth anymore or the direction's gone wrong the next card is the wheel of fortune and again this one pretty much says what it is in the name the wheel of fortune um it is a representation of a cycle um it is to do with fortune to do with change and things like that um cycle inevitable fate that's what i wrote um seeing this in reverse would represent your fear of change um bad luck because it's the wheel of fortune so the opposite of fortune is bad luck um and just yeah basically like a fear of change um try and lose uh trying to cling to control the next card represents the hanged man so this card represents sacrifice hence hanging um that's pretty much it just sacrifice uh a sacrifice needs to be made um also uh i think it was on my book that it says that his legs are shaped in a reversed triangle which could be a representation of um coming down off his high horse basically um getting this card in reverse would just mean that you are like could fear um sacrifice um what else have i written stalling 
needless sacrifices, things like that. So something has to change, you need to make a sacrifice when you find it like this. And in reverse, you could just be stalling uh, or scared to make that sort of sacrifice. The next card I think is always feared by people when they pull it during a reading, but um, that is actually the death card. The death card is actually a positive card. It represents uh, the end of a cycle, a new beginning. Um, that's why you can sort of see all the people dying in the, in the bottom, but um, yeah. So it does, yeah, it does represent a new start. Um, so it is, it is a good card in a way, like, you know, if you're needing some clarity and you pull the death card, it just means that, it, like, you should probably, whatever you're not aware of or you're not sure of should probably end and it's the start of something new. Um, get this in reverse and it is the, I mean, it's the opposite of that. So it's like decay, the fear of change, um, fear of change, decay, stagnation and holding on. But it's almost, yeah, it's like a negative thing. The next card also probably feared is <laughs> the devil, the devil card. Uh, this card represents power, materialism, um, playfulness, it also represents imprisonment. So um, you could interpret it with like being, you know, just imprisoned by like all your materialistic possessions um, and things like that. Now when you get this card in reverse, it represents freedom. Freedom, release and restoring control. The tower is the next card. And the tower represents like a very sudden change um, and kind of chaos in a way. I mean, the, the tower is literally on fire. That's how I remember it. People are jumping out um, to just escape it. So it's like a forced um, change and a very sudden thing, basically. Um, and when you get this in reverse, it can mean that you've either um, delayed the chaos that's about to happen or it's just not going to happen at all anymore and you've kind of avoided it um what else have i written down fear of suffering as well and that's the tower the next card on the list is the star like so now the star represents um rejuvenation <laughs> i just had to think about the word then um and i think of it as like you know, there's that like the pool of re like the pool of youth and rejuvenation. So she's kind of like stepping into it. She's pouring into it. So um, it represents yeah, like rejuvenation and hope. And uh, what else have I got? Hope, inspiration, faith, and rejuvenation. So in reverse, it's just the opposite of that. It's faithless, faithfulness, faith, faith, faithlessness, <laughs> faithlessness, discouragement, and insecurity. That is the star. The next card represents, the, is not even represents, it is the moon. Um, the moon is a representation of emotion. Um, it's also got the little crab because it is the planet that rep, that is, uh, that rules the cancer sign and cancer is the crab sign. Um, it also represents intuition and, um, what else have I written for it? intuition illusion and unconsciousness however when you get it in reverse it can re represent confusion confusion fear and misinterpretation is what i've written and that is the moon now the next card is the sun the sun represents everything positive basically uh, celebration joy, happiness, um, all things good basically is what it represents. Um, get this card in reverse and it literally represents the opposite of that, so sadness and depression. Um, and that's the sun. Now we're down to the last two. So the, la the second to last is judgment. Judgment literally represents uh, like an awakening, uh, self like just think of it as judgment day kind of thing. So you're being judged, you're 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 awakening to that. You're being um, resolution, reflection, awakening, and reckoning. That's what I've written down there. Get judgment in the opposite, and it's doubt, lack of self awareness, and self loathing is what I've written. 
So just, yeah, positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, so yeah, that's judgment for you. Um, self-discovery, lack of self-discovery. And the final card is the world. And the world pretty much just represents um, the completion of something, um, being like awarded that, like just, yeah, the end of something in a positive way though, like you've completed something. Um, when you find this card, however, in reverse, it represents um, no closure and just like not fully being fulfilled in that sort of sense. And um, yeah, that's, that's the world. So those are all the major arcana and uh, the ways that I've interpreted it and I hope it kind of helps anyone else that's interested in learning about tarot. Um, I think the way that I'm sort of doing it at the moment is just taking it into like the different sort of steps um, and different cards and stuff. So I just thought if I just learned the major ones first and like I've written them all down into my book of shadows as well and like with words of, in, of what they mean and what they mean in reverse and things like that. Um, the next ones that I'm going to do, I think, may potentially be, let's see, maybe the cups. I might do all of the cups and that representation of what that means and stuff like that. Um, but I have, like, separated all of my tarots into all of the different um, elements. So we've got the cups, the swords, the pentagons, and the wands. Pentagons, <laughs> pentacles, pentacles? Pentacles, pentagons, pent pentacles and the wands. <laughs> um, so, yeah, see me next week for part two of this little um, Witchcraft Wednesday, Witchy Wednesdays, uh, going into tarot readings and learning about the deck. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys already actually, if there's anyone watching this that actually already is really advanced in tarot readings or anything like that I don't know if you've got like uh, an easier way or maybe some other little um, words that can represent different cards or maybe if I even got some wrong um, just leave a comment down below because it'd be really cool to speak to some more experienced witches um, and get a bit of guidance as well so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I'll see you next week for another one thanks bye